Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, August 24th, 2018. It's about uh, seven minutes before the market opens today, uh, so we'll start out here with the future since these are live streaming. Uh, there's really not much to uh, report right now, and there hasn't been lately in the broad markets. Uh, the futures, uh, you can see, are uh, the markets are indicated to open gap slightly higher today, but for the last week or so, we've really had nothing going on in the markets. You can see uh, here, this is about the last week's of trading, last week of trading, and and we've moved uh, pretty much nowhere. Uh, we've gone sideways, so that's that's it. Not a whole lot to report. Um, you can see that uh, we'll continue to make. Uh, you can see these divergence lines, the lines up top. They show you the divergences. You follow down to the indicators below. Price is making higher highs, and so that's it. So the the bigger picture is we've been stair stepping higher, uh, as you can see here. In doing so, we put in these divergent highs, and that sets up these corrections on the 60-minute time frame. Sometimes you have these little wedge patterns, and of course, trend lines are usually or some sort of support break is your sell signal, not the divergence itself. So as you can see here in the last couple months, um, that's been the pattern, and that will probably most likely continue to be the pattern. You get these 60 minute divergences um, you can also go long in the divergent lows as well that's a indication that a pullback is likely over you're going to get a trend change and again this is a swing trading time frame so here we are right now rising wedge pattern broke down recently um, started to play out impulsively this little rising wedge pattern we had a divergent high at that point but since then we went somehow the market just locked itself in a sideways trading range now uh, so where do we go from here well this divergence certainly could uh, and appears like it would have more to play out. Uh, it hasn't done so yet, but uh, let's just see what happens there. Let me change a tool here. Give me a circle tool and color that white. Playing around with my drawing tools. So that was a previous divergent high, and if we push uh, any higher right now, uh, let's say the spy does pop. It's been struggling. But, you know what you're looking at here, by the way. I should make mention is, and we'll look at this on the daily chart of the spy. Uh, it, it's struggling with those highs back in uh, January. Um, you know, it's it's surprising that we've become so close and on so many attempts. We punched through their intraday, but we haven't been able to make a solid break above those January all-time highs from late January. A solid break and close. Uh, so that's that's what's going on here. The market's just struggling with that level. And as you can see, any new high, as I said before, and, and still maintain, if we get another high anytime soon, it will, uh, again, and, and, and that's the key word, anytime soon, it's guaranteed to be a divergent high because these indicators are lagging. Now, if it doesn't happen soon, we come down, we trade sideways for a longer period of time, maybe these divergences get worked off. But uh, as of now, that's a scenario. So uh, I still think in the very near term, the upside, despite the bullish trend that we're in, and we'll get to the long-term charts in a second, I think that any new high uh, will be sold into. So uh, part of me, I wish is they, they'd get it over with. The S&P would go on, break through there for a day or two, print you know a solid closing a uh, new all-time high, uh, let the cheerleaders pray down on Bubble TV, and then do the reversal. Right now, this is just frustrating. You can't, uh, you can, there's not a trade here to be made in the futures. In other words, that's it. So there's ES. Let's not spend any more time on that. Let's go to NQ quickly. Uh, look at that. So you can see NQ has been in even uh, longer, uh, locked in a trading range for a longer period of time. NQ or the NASDAQ 100 futures. So you have this trading range here, which really mirrors this trading range back here from uh, that was early to late July, about yeah, early to late July. So that's that's what's going on right now with the NASDAQ 100. So uh, you know we need to break above it to be bullish. Uh, a solid impulsive break, not these little limp throughs where you have a brief pop intraday and you fall back down. An impulsive breakout, maybe a back test, that would be bullish, and uh, as would a as a break down below would be bearish and probably bring us back into this trading range here, maybe to the bottom of that range. And you can see some support back here. Um, now, like as with SPY, any new high will simply be an extension of these negative divergences in place. So uh, if we do get the pop to new highs and, you know, I'll flip a coin, whether we're going to you know, pop up there and reverse. It seems that way now because the momentum currently, the very near term momentum is up. Um, so I'd lean towards that scenario, pop through there, put in a divergent high and then reverse. So again, I think right now, despite the 
well, the near near term trend is sideways. You can see that that that's been made clear. Longer term trend remains bullish, but again, it's all about risk reward. Um, some new highs, some breakouts, to new highs are, are are meant to be bought, and uh, you can see something you know security or the markets take off, and others uh, are have a higher rate of failure and i think that's what we're going to see here if we do pop to new highs anytime soon or break out above i should say in the nasdaq 100 this recent trading range or both really we can look for a new high in the nasdaq would be the same 60 minute charts for your qqq traders uh same you know this is qqq now on the 60 minute time frame same time frame we were just looking at same story a series of divergent highs followed by corrections divergent lows signals to go long this was a divergent high uh, there's your divergence. We had a little divergent high right here. Uh, at this point, you can see it drawn with those white lines. And as I just mentioned, same with NQ, uh, we have any new high. That's why I have this yellow line here. We don't have prices touching it yet. That would be your divergence line. So what we're looking at right now, or what I'm looking at, uh, let's clean out this line. Let's clean this up a little bit. Here we go. Bells, the opening bell just rang. So there you go. You have these two reaction highs right here on QQQ, and that's right at about 181.96. Um, here we are trading right now, so we're a little bit above that. But point being, if we pop up here, take out the recent highs right there, these two previous highs, uh, and do so, it will almost certainly, if it happens soon, be a divergent high and most likely fail. And then you want to look at this uptrend line here. I'm going to get to the daily charts in a second because there's some more significant developments to note there. So that's it. I see, uh, you know, we don't have anything remotely close to a sell signal right now um, on the broad markets, but... Uh, we do have the divergent highs and we also have some trend line support to watch so you can see a trend line right here let's just bump out to the daily time frame real quick all right this is the bigger picture here's a trend line that goes all the way back to the left of the chart it goes back to the 2015 lows on qqq it's very well defined a very significant trend line um, that would have longer term bearish implications if broken but it's also if you're looking to buy a pullback a, uh, you know buy a uh, on a dip by a pullback that would certainly be a support level where you might get a reaction off of uh, it's not one that i'd be looking at this point in time to position long on because there are too many divergences across the board 60 minute daily all the way out to the weekly charts uh so I, i'd rather wait and position for a break of that level um to go short with that being said i'm going to give you levels here it is this is the near-term uptrend line it's the same one i was looking at a second ago on the 60 minute chart it's very well defined this is qqq you have numerous reactions. There's a cluster of reactions there, a couple more reactions there, several reactions right there, three more candles right there. So as you can see, uh, and uh, in, in my book, the more reactions on the trend line, the more valid it is. More eyes are watching it. Therefore, if you get a solid impulsive break of that trend line, you have, a, in my opinion, a very high probability sell signal. If you can break that trend line, uh, maybe you break it and back test it. Ideally, you want to see a daily close. But if you break it intraday and it's impulsive selling, uh, that might provide you an objective short entry there. Maybe add on once you get some follow through to the downside. Uh, so that's the level I'm watching. And until and unless that happens, the, the trend is up. We're walking up that trend line. But, but uh, you know, we have the wedging type action that shows the momentum is waning. That's what uh, divergences are all about. These indicators are making lower highs as prices make higher highs. That's simply, that's why, that's what negative divergence is. Prices are moving higher, but the vigor, the buying power uh, and momentum is starting to slow. And that's usually indicative of an impending trend change. So that's why I'm looking now. And that's the nature of a bearish rising wedge pattern. So we had a divergent high back here. You had big, big correction. We had two corrections earlier in the year, the biggest ones that we've had in you know, well over a year. And again, um, instead of that proving to be a great time to get in by the, the you know the markets moved higher but not very impulsively and again it's wedging higher uh, so let's look at uh, spy real quick before we move on there I need to show you the 60 minute chart for you spy traders um, same story as uh, the ES e minis that I showed you there there's divergent high you know same story wash rinse repeat look for these divergent highs and divergent lows uh, divergent high correction, divergent low rally, divergent high right there. Little correction pushed up, made another consecutive divergent high. We had another correction down to this level, continue to push up once again, another divergent high. So that's why I think this market is just running out of steam. But you know, the bigger picture, it is stair stepping up uh, and has been. So 
that's that's what it looks like so far um, but with this most recent divergent high and as i just pointed out uh, whether this divergent high marks uh, the beginning of uh, another correction uh, right now it hasn't been really been enough it's mostly sideways action or we push up and make one new marginal new high again that would actually it would fulfill a lot of that it would get that that new high in the s p 500 out of the way which would be nice to kind of just you know, let them let them print the record books, a new closing high, um, uh, longest bull market in history, all that good stuff, whatever metric you want to use by that, whether you want to count the intraday break or the, uh, you know, a closing, a uh, new closing high. Uh, there it is. So if we push up in the next week or so, today's Friday, whether we do it today or next week, it would, uh, like I said, almost certainly have these divergences extended simply be another uh, divergent high and then that would set the stage i think for another pullback uh to where well, I, I, bigger than these is my my thoughts uh why well these were smaller divergences this is one large series of consecutive divergences so it's technically just one larger uh in in magnitude a larger divergent high therefore that would indicate a deeper correction uh so maybe something along the lines of this one or more so probably bring us back down here to that 279.45 level uh and quite possibly more maybe all the way down here to that uh that t3 zone that i had uh, i've had on here for a while these are all target zones t3 t2 T1 was an actual level there, I believe. Uh, I have to look at that. But that's this is this is uh, a minimum target right here, 279.45, very well defined level. Uh, that's one I think you should have on your charts if you're bullish and you want to buy a dip. Uh, you know, there's a level that was a breakout <coughs> to not all-time highs, but uh, since the January highs, that level was tested several times, and we broke out uh, right here, back tested it. Rallied, back tested again, back tested again successfully, back tested it once more. So it's a very significant level at this point in time. So uh, if you're uh, you know looking to buy a dip, if you happen to get there, it's certainly objective. Would I buy it? No, because it's it would come on the heels of these divergences. I might gain a bounce off it, but I'd be looking uh, more for a break of that level to position short uh, than I would um, for a swing trade long. Bigger picture on the SPY, this is a daily chart. Uh, this is a trend line to watch. I showed you a comparable trend line on QQQ, the, the near-term trend line that comes off this one's off the April 2nd low. Uh, quite a few reactions, not as well-defined as the SPY, but uh, it's worth noting. And again, I would put that as a comparable level. Now, I'm sorry, is QQQ. However, SPY is comfortably above this trend line. So SPY has more room to go. And I often say this, if I'm gonna trade, even though I typically trade QQQ or NQ more often because there's just more volatility. It's a more concentrated index, a lot more tech stocks. So you get more bang for your buck in either direction, long or short, if you get the call right, because uh, it tends to move up and down more than SPY. Um, now, with that being said, uh, the safe thing to do is, if you're looking to, in this case, maybe short, you don't want just a break of that trend line. That would be an it would be an early sell signal. Maybe take a partial position, but uh, uh, you want to also see this level go before you get too aggressively short if you are looking to do so, um, because what may happen is uh, QQQ breaks down below its trend line. Let's just say this was even though we're looking at spy. Let's say that QQQ breaks down. SPY comes down, but then SPY hits support here. You can see around 279.67, we have horizontal support. That's that same level I was talking on the 60-minute chart that uh, we've tested all year and then broke out and back tested. That's a very well-defined support level, as is this trend line. So on a scale 1 to 10, that's up there. That's a very significant uh, support level because you have dual intersecting support levels. You have trend line support and price support. So my scenario now, so let's say QQQ breaks down. SPY also moves down roughly proportionally in percentage terms, but then SPY comes and hits this level and bounces because a lot of buyers might want to step in there. It's a pretty well-defined support level, and that would cause QQQ then to come in and backtest its trend line from below. So that's why maybe a partial position of QQQ breaks, and then you can always add there, uh, maybe SPY after a reaction there goes on to then um, take that level out. Um, now, Anything can happen. That's why I say with trading, you always have to be prepared. You have plan A, plan B, and plan C, and you have to be reactive. Sometimes the you know, best you know, support levels are just smashed through like they're not even there, and that would be very bearish to see that happen. I could just say that now. For whatever reason, SPY just blasts on down through there next week like it's not even there. Uh, 
get out of dodge in my opinion but we're probably coming down here to test these these previous lows from earlier in the year so that's it those are levels to watch and again i know there's a lot of moving parts but uh you know trading is not you know as simple as even if you're trading one instrument like spy or qqq uh, i think you need to watch the rest of the market watch the majority of stocks um for for those reasons that I said there. So there it is. And if SPY continues, you know, to just grind its way higher, if it does go on to take out, there's that high from uh, January, uh, the all-time high. And uh, if it does go on to make a solid break and close above there and maybe even rally for a little bit, like I said, this line here uh, on the daily chart is your divergence line. It's just going to extend. And uh, that doesn't mean that the breakout is guaranteed to fail. It just puts a, a much higher probability that it will fail uh, within time frame. Usually if these breakouts are going to fail, it'll do it within a week or two normally. Uh, there's some, you know, give or take there. And you also have uh, this other divergence line right here. If I take away that one you have on the SPY, you have divergence from this point right here with this line as well. And again, that divergence can simply be extended if we go up a little bit higher. So right now I have it drawn on the top of price. So that's it. That's SPY. And let's wrap this up. I do want to look at one thing on the weekly chart and we'll wrap it up. So long term. All right. This, is a, this, is a, this encompasses this entire bull market. Uh, longest in history and, uh, you know, just matched or met that mark on Wednesday, I think it was. Uh, with the 90s bull market. Uh, so you can see the low back here in March of 2009. And what I wanted to show, let's zoom in real quick. There's a weekly chart, big divergences on the weekly chart, just like we had negative divergence here. It doesn't look like much when you use log scaling, but this was, uh, if you traded, you remember back in 2015, we have what some people even consider a bear market. I'm um, referring to it as a deer market. A deer market's when you trade. Uh, it's neither a bull or a bear. You had about, you know, almost about two years of sideways trading. You had two big corrections in there. Some indice indices did drop more than 20%, like the small and mid caps. Um, the large caps just managed to avoid that um, uh, that quote unquote bear market designation of a drop of 20% or more off the highs, but uh, close enough. And we had even intraday, I think the Qs exceeded that drop, but not on a closing basis. So again, it's all semantics, whether you want to call that a correction within a bull market, you want to call it a bear market, doesn't matter. It is what it is. And uh, but what I wanted to highlight here are these divergent highs. Uh, this was a big, you know, back here. And again, it doesn't look like much on log scaling, but you had a divergent high on the weekly. There was about a 15, 16 percent drop. You had an even larger drop back here. This one was almost 20 percent right here back in 2011. And again, I went over these. These were almost 20 percent as well. Uh, so they don't look like much. But what do they have in common? Uh, my lines just flashed away for a second there. Uh, they they are all preceded by divergent highs. Now let's just take a look at one thing, and this is what I wanted to show you on the weekly time frame. And then we'll wrap up here. Uh, let's look at this. Let's look at that 2011 correction. So what you what you had here, the prices were moving up, and they flattened out, and they traded sideways for you know, better part, about six months or so. So you had divergence there. There was negative divergence. You can see prices were making equal or marginally higher highs with the indicators lagging. So there's your negative divergence. And then boom, then you had that roughly almost a 20% drop right there. Now, what happened after that? And this is what I wanted to zoom in on. So we had these highs right here. And you also had a, a support shelf. This line right here was support. You can see that's where prices were kind of uh, holding support, finally broke with a big red impulsive candle. And so what I did is I extended this line. You can see that we came back up. That was support. Support once broken becomes resistance. So we went there, we hit it, we failed at that resistance level. Consolidated for a while, finally broke out. And then once you break out, you had a pretty nice move up. And you even went on, you continued on to take out those previous highs as well. Um, but then you came in afterwards and uh, you can extend, you can probably see where I'm going here. You can extend these lines here. You had negative divergence at that point, just like today. And this is what I was referring to. So if we break out to new highs, this was a new high, break out to, to new highs in SPY, at least multi-year highs. And, uh, and that new high failed. So where did it go to? It came back 
to support right there, that same support level that was support here, resistance there, tested it, and then moved on up. Uh, and you can see we also once after that point tested these highs. So these are things I'm looking at. That's technical analysis. So uh, where am I going with it? Well, let's just watch today. We have similar levels here. We had the market peaked out here. We didn't have a, a, a series of highs. We had that one peak. It was sort of like a blow off top. We had a big ramp up into January, a very strong rally and a correction. But then we came up here. And if you recall earlier on, in this video on the 60 minute and daily chart, I showed you this level after that high, that all time high back in January. This is where this has been the resistance level the market has struggled with for a while or was for a while. These are weekly candles, one, two, three weeks there. We came up, tested again, failed. Finally, we took it out. And as I showed you on the 60 minute daily, we we're back testing it. So now that's a level again, a support level to watch. And, um, but just as back then, you have any new high now will be a divergent high. And if we come back in, we've tested it enough already. I think that we will fall back down and then probably come and test this, this primary uptrend line. No, I'm sorry. This is, yes, this is the primary uptrend line right here off the uh, 2009 lows. So I zoom all the way out. There it is. You can see 2009. And then it picks up here and it catches a lot of the candles along the way. So this is... Um, to me, one of the most important trend lines right now in the U.S. stock market. It's captured a lot of these reactions. And yes, you might say, well, some of those candles went through there, Randy. Those are intra-week breaks, and that doesn't matter. If you're trading a weekly time frame, um, what matters are the weekly closes. And you could, of course, have one through there. That's not the end of the world. But when I draw a trend line, and I think trend line drawing is an art, not a science, I look for the most uh, a uh, cluster of both candlestick shadows, the skinny part there, those are the intraweek moves, and bodies. So in this case, you have just a confluence. There's a, you know, a shadow, body, shadow, body, body, shadow. There was an intraweek pop below, but we closed back above it. And so you get the point. A lot of reactions there. So uh, we're far from it now. Um, well, it's hard to say that's all relative. We could have a drop. You see the size of these candles. So uh, I'll say it this way. Technically, we're only one bad week away. This is a bad week right here in the markets. This was a bad week in the market. And if you look at the size of that candle, um, you can see in just one week, should things get ugly quick, we could break that trend line or at least come back down to it. And uh, again, it's these divergences right here that are pretty ominous in my opinion. Yes, the momentum's there, the market's making new highs. Uh, we don't have any sell signals yet, but we're precariously close to that trend line right now. That's the thing. Here, we were far from it. These were just corrections. This was a correction that brought us back to that trend line. This was a correction that brought us back to that trend line, as was the next one there. Uh, so if we get another big correction, we could break it, or maybe we hit it and continue on. Either way, it's worth watching. And just to wrap up, uh, this is the QQQ weekly chart, a uh, chart I've shared many times. It shows uh, all the divergent highs. I don't believe I missed any. I, I made a point to come go through this chart with a fine tooth comb, even pointing out this little tiny, you know, baby divergent high, very small relative to the, you know, the scope of this is a 10 year compass is a whole bull market. And yeah, that was only a 4% drop, but it was a small divergent high. And as I often say, the, the um, the magnitude of a move, whether you have bullish divergence, positive divergence, or negative divergence, is typically typically commensurate with the scope of the divergences and the magnitude of those divergences. In other words, we're looking at a weekly chart here. So these are multi-month divergences. In some case, they might last a year or more. And uh, what you get in this case, you had what I keep referring to as consecutive divergences. We had a divergent high at this point, and there was a 10% correction. When we pushed up, those divergences remained intact. These indicators continued to lag. So this were technically three smaller divergences, each with a correction. But um, you can see back here, actually, well, was this one, then the other one. Then you got the really big correction. You had a 26% drop in the Qs. Uh, the NDX, by the way, didn't drop that much. That was QQQ had a mini crash at, uh, one of those days in there. So that's a weekly candle. Uh, but then you had another big 18% drop after that with as these divergences continued to persist so these were like one what i call one and done divergences and they were good for drops you know 18 16 13 percent 10 and we had a small divergent high here that was a 12 percent drop so where i'm going with this is uh you know these divergences more often than not play out they don't have to but much more often than not they do play out and when this one plays out i suspect it will be 
to the larger end of what you see here on all these, especially, especially if this trend line breaks. And that's the scary part. We're, we're pretty close. To, we're in close proximity to the trend line, just like we were here. So you had little corrections here. They brought us back to the trend line, brought us back to the trend line. But then momentum was waning. You can see candlesticks pinching closer and closer. There wasn't a lot of room to spare. And we finally broke that well-defined trend line off the 2012 lows there. Boom, big drop. And we came and we back tested it right here. This point right here was a back test. Boom, 18% drop. So that's the thing, guys. These divergences look too big, in my opinion, to be satisfied with just a little 5 6% pullback to hit the trend line and then go on up. Um, that's kind of where I'm going with this. So there it is. And I did a video recently for the subscribers, the right side of the chart, uh, on global markets. And, uh, I, I continue to maintain what I said in that video, uh, despite the, the trend and the outperformance of the U S market, the risk reward, in my opinion, is much more favorable right now in overseas markets, particularly the European and Asian markets. Um, so, you know, U S markets are in a trend uptrend until they're not anymore. And that's it. But it's where you're looking at the next 20% or so, our uh, next 10% or so, um, I think it'll be tough sledding in the, in the U.S. markets. And uh, again, there's a lot of variables and factors I covered in that video, currencies, everything else that come into play uh, that uh, make the outlook a little more favorable or considerably more favorable, I think, in the uh, non-U.S. markets right now. Well, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.